Hello out there. Um, this is for anybody who's been working with integrals just a little bit, just getting started. Um, there's a particular technique um, that's useful when uh, doing basic integration, um, and that's essentially reversing the chain rule. Um, now there's a more sophisticated reverse chain rule approach um, that we're going to look at later, but for now, we're simply going to look at composite functions where the inside function is a linear function, ax plus b or mx plus b, if you have a linear function, and then you have an outer function that's, say, for example, a power function, then there's a way to integrate using the reverse power rule and the reverse chain rule. If you look at all this, it's a whole bunch of letters. It's like alphabet soup. Um, but if you studied it, you'll recognize that the n power goes up to n plus 1. And then in addition to the linear function being retained inside, we're also dividing by a, which is the slope, and we're dividing by n plus 1, which was the new power. So we see we're reversing the power rule, which is why we're dividing by n plus 1. And we're also reversing the chain rule, which made us used to have to multiply by a when we differentiate. Now we're dividing by a. That's a lot to look at, and some people uh, have different levels of math literacy. It might be easier to see if you saw it in example form. So here we have a linear function, 3x minus 5, raised to a power. Um, so that is a composite of a power function to a linear function. And according to the uh, process, I reverse the power rule by raising the power by 1. And then I divide by that new power, and I also divide by the slope to undo the chain rule. Don't forget to add the constant, and uh, just do some simplification. Uh, 3 times 5 is 15, so that's 1 15th. And of course, when you go through to check your answer, we're going to multiply by the 5 power, and that um, takes care of the 5 part of the 15. We're going to drop the power by 1, but then the chain rule, remember, says that we have to take the derivative of the inner function, which is linear, and the derivative of the linear function is its slope. And then the 3 times the 5 divided by the 15, all that stuff cancels out, or divides out to 1, and uh, that leaves us with our starting function. So this part right here, where I'm using the chain rule um, to multiply by the slope, is being undone here. When I reverse chain rule, I'm going to divide by the slope when I'm integrating. This even works when you're dealing with radical expressions. One like this with the square root in the denominator of a linear function can be expressed, as you recall, as 2x minus 7 to the negative 1 half power. 1 half for the square root and negative for the reciprocal part. So according to the power rule, I increase the power by 1, and notice that negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. Then I divide by the 2, and I divide by the new power. Remember, dividing by a half is really multiplying by 2. So the 2's divide out, and we put the power back as a radical, since that's the form I got. Then we see the end result, square root 2x minus 7 plus c. All right, um, now just one last thing about this little power rule. Um, you can memorize this if you want to, but it is common sense. But it's got this extra part out here that said n is not equal to negative 1. I just wanted to look at that real quick and figure out why the heck is that not working. And um, I first I try to do the power rule just like this says, and that means I have to add 1 to the power negative 1. So now I have a 0 power. Now you might already see this, but in order to finish the process, I need to divide by the power and by the slope of the linear, but you can't divide by zero. That's a no bueno. So this doesn't work. There's a reason why it doesn't work, and you might recognize that when you see the expression written as 1 over 4x minus 1. This is just a transformation of the 1 over x, and as we know, the integral of 1 over x dx is the natural log of x, absolute value, and therefore, when we have a negative 1 power, it's excluded from this cool power rule trick because it's an exception to the rule. Uh, so it has its own rule, and basically whenever you have 1 divided by a linear function, you use the natural log as its integral. But we are still reversing the chain rule by dividing by the slope. So that's why in this case, if I had 4x minus 1 to the negative 1, what I should have done earlier, instead of trying to apply the power rule, is I should have just taken the natural log of the linear function and divided by the slope of that line, and that gives me what I need. 
This rule is also generalizable for any of the transcendental functions that we studied before. Look at e to the x. If you have e to a linear function, then its integral is e to that same linear function, but instead of multiply, it's divide by the slope. Even trig, the integral of the sine of a linear function. It's going to be, in this case, the opposite of cosine of the linear function, but also dividing by the slope. So you see the pattern? And basically, we reverse the chain rule by dividing by the slope of the inner linear function. Again, more sophisticated functions come along. We're going to have to learn some different ways to reverse the chain rule, but this is the most basic and uh, should become part of your repertoire. Thanks for watching.